the name of the Lord once again. Go ahead and give him all the glory, honor, and adoration that is due to him. Bless him from the depth of your heart. Don't just mutter words. Make sure you are blessing the name of the Lord. Make sure you are magnifying him. Make sure you are praising him. Tell him, Father, I thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for bringing me to the second half of the year. Thank you for bringing me to your sanctuary again this morning. Thank you for bringing me here to bless me. Thank you for bringing me here to change my story. Thank you for bringing me here to liberate my destiny. Thank you for bringing me here to take me to a higher level. Thank you for bringing me here to encounter you in a different way. Make sure you are talking to God. Make sure you are talking to God. Make sure you are talking to God. The Bible says, as I've heard you say in my ears, so will I do. God is ready to confirm the words proceeding out of your mouth. So make sure you don't keep quiet. Make sure you are speaking to him. Tell him your expectations this morning. Tell him that which you want him to do. He said, as I have heard you say, that is what I will do. As I have heard you say, that is what I will do. Make sure you are speaking to God. Make sure you are telling him what you want him to do. Make sure you are telling him what you want to go back home with this morning. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise and we give you glory. Thank you because our expectations shall not be cut short. Thank you because we are returning home with the manifestations of our expectations in the name of Jesus. If you believe that is already answered, shout a louder, amen. Please jam those beautiful hands together for Jesus. And please, you may be seated. It's a great privilege standing before us again this morning, sharing the word of God. And I believe that as you have spoken in the ears of the Lord, so shall it do in the name of Jesus. This would be your best moment yet in his presence in the name of Jesus. If you believe that is you, let your amen be the loudest. Amen. I've once told us here before. That excitement is the proof of expectation. Hello? So if you're expectant, you must be excited. If you're expectant, you show it in excitement. Because expectation will bath manifestation. But the proof of your expectation is excitement. Eh? So be excited in the presence of God. It doesn't matter what you left home with. Be excited. Because you are expectant. Amen? Be excited because what? You are expectant. And your expectation will birth manifestations in the name of Jesus. I'm so excited about the theme for this month. And it is gaining momentum. Help me tell your neighbor, gain momentum. See it like you mean it. And our topic this morning is dimensions of the spirit. The dimensions of the spirit. But let me quickly lay a foundation before we go into the topic. Now, what does it mean to gain momentum? 
Momentum is a force that keeps you motivated after you have embarked on a thing, a process, or a journey. Amen. A lot of us, when the prayers were led, you didn't pray very well. But I'm sure after this message, you will pray very well because you have a better understanding of what you need to pray for. Praise God. So it is the force that keeps you motivated after you have embarked on a process or a journey. It is the force that keeps you advancing. It keeps you progressing. It keeps you developing. It keeps you relevant. It is a force that keeps you seeing an improved version of yourself. Amen. Either spiritually, physically, or financially. And I believe that this is the force, or this is the thing that you and I need at such a time as this. Amen. If you are here, shout hallelujah. Now, this force is more than just self-determination. Instead, what it does, it pushes or it propels your determination to tangible results. This force pushes your desires to reality. Are we together? Are we together? Amen. So it is a force that pushes your desires to reality. In Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 says, not in your own strength, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. It says, not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you. Listen. Energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Not in your own strength, but it is who? It is God who is at work in you. Who is all the while effectually at work in you. Creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Now Jesus talking to his disciples in Matthew chapter 26 verse 41. Please I want you to follow me. We have been able to see that it says it is God that is at work in you. And now look at, in, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 41b, Jesus Christ was speaking to his disciples. He said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Earlier on in that, in that uh, chapter, these were the guys that told Jesus Christ that if it means dying, we will die with you. <laughs> we will not deny you. Wherever you go, we will go. And now, he called them to come and intercede for him so that he will not die that death that they are saying he should not die. And here they are sleeping just for one hour. And when Jesus Christ saw them, he said, the spirit is indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. This means that there was a part in the disciples that really desired to carry out that divine assignment given to them by Jesus. There was a part in them that desired to do his assignment. But there was another part that was supposed to carry out this process that was weak. And Jesus Christ said, I know you want to do it. But there is a weak part of you. And that is the path that is supposed to carry out this divine process. Shout hallelujah. Shout a louder hallelujah. And I'm sure you'll be able to identify with this. That so many times you come to church. You go for seminars. You hear powerful messages. You read books. You are so 
inspired. You are so motivated. You have that burning desire to make that change. And you're like, I'm leaving this place. You have your notes jotted out that these are the things that I'm, I'm going to begin to do. You have your line of action. You have your plans. You have everything all figured out that, oh, after this message, these are the things I'm going to do. Do you have a witness in the house? Do I have a witness in the house or nobody here? That when you leave the church, let me be sure you are with me. Praise God. <laughs> Hello. Are we together? Please, I'm going as slow as possible because you must get this. I said several times, we hear powerful messages. You go for seminars, you are inspired. You are motivated. You read a book. You have your points. You have everything. That these and these are the things I'm going to start doing based on what I've heard so that my life can change. Do I have a witness in the house? But you find out that those desires, at times you even start, true or false? And after some time, weariness sets in. Those desires are no longer sustainable. You begin to wear out. You begin to burn out. Hallelujah. Those desires are not powered to reality because they don't become sustainable. Praise the Lord. Paul said in Acts chapter 26, Verse 22a. Acts chapter 26, verse 22a. He said, Having therefore obtained help from God, I continue unto this day. Is the scripture on the screen here? Yeah. Having therefore obtained help from God, I continue unto this day. Paul is saying that. Having obtained help from God, I have been able to sustain what I started. I have been able to fulfill purpose. I have remained relevant having obtained help from God. Remember the story of Paul started when? Acts chapter 9. He said, having obtained help from God, I have been able to make a success out of this divine assignment. Having obtained help from God, I have not been a once upon a time success story. Having obtained help from God, I continue till this day. Shout hallelujah. Now from the definition of momentum that I gave earlier on, the force that helps you to advance, that helps you to progress, that helps you to remain relevant, we can read that scripture. It's okay, it's been taken away. We can read that scripture this way, based on the topic we are treating. We can say, having therefore, Paul speaking now, having therefore gained momentum, I continue to this day. Having therefore obtained help, I continue. So there is something that makes you continue. There is something that makes you relevant year in, year out. So the momentum that you and I need to gain, I'm laying a foundation is divine help. Help me tell your neighbor, divine help. It is power from on high. Help me tell your neighbor, power from on high. So this is what you need to keep moving. To power those desires. To power those determinations. To reality. If you are with me, shout hallelujah. Now, 
John said it. John said it categorically in John chapter 3 verse 27. The message translation. Listen to this. In John chapter 3 verse 27. He said, John answered, it's not possible for a person to succeed. I'm talking about eternal success. Ah, this is deep. <laughs> Sustainable success. He said it is not possible for a person to succeed. I'm talking about eternal success without, without, without. Hallelujah. If you read the preceding verses of this scripture, what happened was the disciples of John came to meet John and said that, see that guy, that you were the one that launched him out. Oh. You were the one that put him through business. So oh. You were the one that um, attested of him. Oh. He was talking about Jesus. He said, uh, uh, the message translation says, he is now competing with us. <laughs> Amen. You are in for serious competition in this world. But there is something that has to distinguish you from them. He said he's now competing with us. If you look at the message version, he said he's now competing with us. People are now coming to him other than us. John now replied them. He said it is impossible. Leave him. There is something that he has that I don't have. Hallelujah. He said, without heaven's help. There is something that this guy has that I don't have. If you look at the story of Uzziah in 2 Chronicles chapter 26 verse 15. He says, Uzziah received marvelous help from God. And his fame spread abroad. Because he received marvelous help from God. Success and sustainable success is by divine help. Power from on high advances a man or a woman's destiny. Power from on high will help you achieve your dreams and aspirations. When that angel visited Mary in Luke chapter 1, beginning from verse 24 down, Mary said, he said, you are going to do the impossible. You are going to have a son. He's going to be great. He's going to be called the son of the highest. God is going to give him the throne of his father, David, and all that and all that. That is the son you are going to have. And, you know, Mary was happy. Like you and I would be happy if God had told you, you are going to do this, you are going to do that. Unachievable, I mean unimaginable feats. And Mary asked a very good question. He said, how can these things be? I don't know a man. How can the impossible be possible? How can I achieve every of these things that my, my mouth is already watering? Amen. How am I going to achieve every of these things that you have spoken to me about? And he said... The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. And when this power comes, it's going to make the impossible possible. When this power comes, it's going to bring that your dream and that your aspiration and that your desire is going to bring them to reality. When this power comes, it's going to make you a wonder to your world. When this power comes, it's going to make you an amazement to your world. Power from on high. Power from on high. Amen. This is the power that helps you achieve your set goals. This power helps you to take the right steps at the right time to get the right results. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody say power from on high. Let me just quickly put it this way. If you want to cook fried rice, amen, 
We have just come down from the mountain, so I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to tempt anybody. Praise God. Praise God. I mean, we have just come down from the mountain. How many of us went to the mountain? Praise God. You know, I said it um, humorously on Thursday when I was teaching here. I said, um, fasting is a way you humble yourself before God when you have boasted before men. Praise God. <laughs> Let me just quickly say that. Fasting and prayer is a platform where you humble yourself before God when you have boasted before men. Let me quickly give you two examples. It's not a digression. It's, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be, be a blessing to somebody here. You know, when Ezra, in Ezra chapter 8, when Ezra had boasted before the king, that don't worry, we don't need your bodyguard. We don't need anything from you. Our God is able to, to, to guide us. Our God is able to take us through this journey. We don't need anything. You know what he did from verse 21 to 23? He now called his people. He said, let us go and humble ourselves in three days fasting, night and day. Three days night, three days uh, day without food, without water. He said, we, we now went to humble ourselves because... I am too embarrassed to go and ask the king again for any bodyguard because I've told him because our God is strong and mighty to keep us all the way. Amen. Say that's one example. And he said that our God answered us. Number two, <laughs> Elijah. When Elijah told Ahab in 1 Kings chapter 18, when Elijah told Ahab, he said, go up and eat. You know where Elijah went up to? He went up to Carmel. <laughs> Praise God. You know what he did? He had, told, he had told Ahab, go up and eat, for I hear the sound of abundance of rain. He now went up to Camel to go and do what? To go and humble himself before God. He had boasted before Ahab, oh God, <laughs> you need to do something. And when his servant came and said, ah, me or he said, eh, you better go back. <laughs> God will not put us to shame. Amen. Amen. That's just by the way. Hallelujah. So I said if you want to cook fried rice and you have all your ingredients, you have all your ingredients, what I've said, I know it's a blessing to somebody. Don't worry. I, I don't know why I'm going back to it again. Whatever that issue is, whatever that issue of concern is, and you have said my God is able to do it, I'm here to tell you that your God is more than able to handle it. And it will, it will surprise you. Because when Elijah called upon God, God answered him. When Ezra called upon God, God answered him. Now, whatever that issue of concern is, I have boasted before men that don't worry, go away with your own power. My God is able to do it for me. I tell you, God will surprise you. He will show up for you. And you will not be put to shame in the name of Jesus. If you receive that, let your amen be the loudest. So, Putting, cooking fried rice, I've not forgotten what I'm trying to say. Amen. So if you're trying to cook fried rice, you have all your ingredients, you have everything put together. You know that the carrots, the green peas, the shrimps and whatever, whatever, they will not turn to fried rice raw like that. All of them put together need to go through a process. And that process is heat. Hello. You have to put all those ingredients together. Your raw rice, the carrots, the peas, the shrimps, whatever that you want to use. Your spring onions, everything. They have to go through a process. And that process is the heat. Now what I'm trying to bring out here is that you can be diligent. Hello. You can have skill. You can have the anointing. But every of these things put together, they need to be powered. Until every of these ingredients come together and go through that heat, you won't have fried rice. Oh. Hello? If that fried rice is your desire, and you say, yes, I have rice. I even have a bag of rice. 
I even have a sack of carrots. I even have a sack of green peas. I have rice. I, I mean, I have everything that I have. I need, rather. Until you put every of these things together and they go through that heat process, you are not going to get any fried rice. Until it is powered, let me put it that way, through that heat. So your diligence, your skill, your everything that you are doing in your career, in your profession, they need to be powered. They need to go through a process. And that is the power from on high that we are talking about. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So the good news is you and I have access to this divine power. That we put every of the things that we have together so that we can have our desired goal, our desired result in the name of Jesus. In John chapter 14, 16 to 17, John chapter 14, verse 16 to 17, our, the amplified version, Jesus Christ said, I am going, but I'm going to send you another helper in person of the Holy Spirit. He said, it will be with you and it will, live in, it will live in you forever. The Holy Spirit is our divine helper. It will be with us and it will live with us forever. So the Holy Spirit empowers you and I for success and sustainable success in every area of our lives. Is the one that will power those your set goals. Is the one that will power every of your dreams. Is the one that will power every of your plans. Is the one that will power every of your targets to reality. Let me tell you something. Peter. Peter in that John chapter 5. Peter was a diligent man. He was a skillful fisherman. He must have thought of his plans very well. He must have had his target when he was leaving his house. He must have told his wife, don't worry, I'm coming back with fish. He had a plan going out that night, true or false. He had something in mind. Hello? He was skillful. He was diligent. Somebody will leave his house in the middle of the night. And he had it all calculated because he said, we all know that the night time is the best time to fish. True or false? And he had it all figured out. He had all his plans together. And he went out that night. To go and fish. Diligent man that wanted to provide for his family. That wanted to provide for his household. He didn't want to beg. Hard working, diligent, skillful. And he went out that night. And he toiled all night. He labored all night. And the Bible says he caught nothing. Hello. Not even one Titus. Not even one Geisha. Not even one Croker. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Looked at my time and I quickly focused again. Praise God. So, this Peter, until he now came in contact with Jesus, a higher power, a higher power. And you can imagine if Jesus Christ had not met with Peter that morning, Peter would have just gone back home and be telling his wife stories. He said, not even one. Do you want to tell me Peter did not try? He tried. He put in his best. But he caught nothing until Jesus came. And that is the power from on high that we are talking about. And when Jesus Christ came on the scene, Bible scholars told us that what Peter caught that day was not just a day's wage. It was a year's wage. Hello? You didn't get that. Even if Peter had been fishing and been getting something before, when this higher power came, the result he commanded, the result he commanded was a year's wage. Permit me to say it in Yoruba. 
Ori ni Ojoko. It was even less than Ojo. Praise God. When that higher power came on the scene, praise the Lord. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witness. You shall receive power. And the witness, another word for witness is proof. Another word for witness is evidence. Another word for witness is testimony. He said, you shall be my witness. You shall be a living testimony. You shall be a living proof. You shall be a living evidence. He said, in Jerusalem, Judea, and uttermost parts of the earth. And I interpret that to be both state, locally, internationally. In your state, in your country, and your, in, in, even outside the world. Outside your country, rather. Amen. So when the power of the highest comes upon you, you become a living testimony of the goodness of the Lord, of the grace of the Lord, of the power of the Lord. You will not even need to, to talk because your life will begin to share its own testimony in the name of Jesus. If that will be your testimony from today, I want your amen to be the loudest. Now, let me begin to narrow it down to the topic of this morning. Amen. Dimensions of the Spirit. He said you shall receive power. And that's talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the source of this divine help. But the Holy Spirit now has different channels, different dimensions. I want you to listen very well. So, the Holy Spirit is the main source. Just like the source of electricity that comes into your house, one. But we have one powering this fan. We have another one powering this light. We have another one powering the, the air conditioners. You know, so we, we, the Holy Spirit is the source of help. But there are, it manifests himself in different dimensions and different channels. Amen. So, extraordinary results, outstanding feats, fulfillment of destiny, full proof of your skills and talents, Continuous advancement and relevance in life is at the mercy of the activation or the operation of these dimensions of the spirit in your life. I'm going to take that again. Making a full proof of your skills and your talents. Fulfillment of your dreams. Extraordinary results is at the mercy of the activation, listen to that, of these dimensions of the spirit in your life and my life. Until these dimensions of, of the spirit are activated in your life, you can't make a full proof of your skill and your talent. You can't command any extraordinary results. Dimensions of the spirit. Channels of the spirit. Channels of my spirit. Open up. I am with the Father. Open up. No boundaries, no limits. Open up. Let deep call unto deep, open up the channels of my spirit, open up. I am with the Father, I am with the Father, open up. No boundaries, no limit, no boundaries, no limit.
your spirit that must open up. There are realms of glory that your world is waiting to see that only the activation of these dimensions of spirit can command. Please take your seat. Just be seated as I, as I round, round off. In Isaiah chapter 11, beginning from verses 1 to 2, speaking of Jesus Christ, it says, Out of Jesus there shall rest the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. These are dimensions of the spirit. Don't forget, it started with the spirit of the Lord. He now said the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And we have some other ones, the spirit of grace and supplication, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of boldness. And these are the dimensions of the spirit that helped Jesus to fulfill his ministry here on earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 10 verse 38, the Bible says, God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power. If these dimensions of the Spirit were not activated in the life of Jesus, your Jesus, my Jesus, he wouldn't have been able to fulfill his assignments here on earth. If Jesus needed it, you and I need it. Dimensions of the spirit. Don't worry. If I don't finish today, we're coming back for part two next week by his grace. And I'm telling you, as I was preparing for this message, my spirit was welling up. Because, I mean, it was, it's something that <laughs> you and I need to fulfill destiny. Until certain dimensions of the spirit are activated in your life and in my life. We'll just be laboring and we'll have nothing to show for it. But that is over from today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Exodus chapter 28 verse 3, I'll, I'll, I'll stop with this scripture and we'll continue from there next week. Because I want us to pray a little. In Exodus chapter 28 verse 3. It says, so you shall speak to all who are gifted artisans. Whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. I want you to note two words there. Gifted artisans. Filled with the spirit of wisdom. Everybody gifted. But the ones out of the gifted, listen, that are filled with the spirit of wisdom. I want you to get that. Everybody gifted, but out of the gifted, out of the crowd, the ones that have the spirit of wisdom. God was telling Moses, these are the people that I want. These are the people that I want you to come, to call, to come and perform the work in the house of the Lord. And let me close with this, you can be skillful and be foolish. You can be gifted <laughs> and it doesn't profit you. My husband told me at his former place of work that his boss called him and said, you are good, but your work is not visible. You are good, but your work is not visible. That is deep. Coming from an unbeliever. You are good, but your work is not visible. Do you know what that means? <laughs> you will be working. You are good. You are putting in your best, but nobody is recognizing it. Nobody is seeing it. At the time of promotion, they will just say very good, but no recommendation for promotion. At the time of appraisal, they were appraised very good, but no recommendation for promotion. You are good, but your work is not visible. The dimension of the spirit that powers the visibility of men's work was not yet at, at work in his life. 
There is a dimension of the spirit that powers your walk, little walk, to be seen by the whole world. And that taught him a great lesson. And that lesson, he started applying in every of the other places that he walked. I want you to be on your feet. I want you to be on your feet. You are good. That was coming from an unbeliever. He said, you are good. <laughs> but your work cannot be seen. There is a dimension of the spirit that powers your giftings. That powers your work to reality. We'll continue from here next week. But I want you to pray and talk to God. Like that song. Dimensions of the spirit that I need to power my giftings, to power my talents, to power my desires, to result, to sustainable result, to sustainable and outstanding success. Lord, let it come upon me now in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray, I want you to pray, I want you to pray that that dimension I need it. That dimension of the spirit that I need, oh God, to power that assignment you have given unto me. Not just to ordinary result, but extraordinary result, outstanding result. Lord, let it come upon me in the name of Jesus. Let it open up to me right now in the mighty name of Jesus. If you can pray in the spirit, just pray in the spirit. Let those dimensions of the spirit be activated. Let them be activated. Let them be activated. Let them be activated. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. That dimension of the spirit that we all need to be activated in our lives for our assignment to be fulfilled on earth. Lord, release unto us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Generation after generation Keep breathing you, yet no word sums you up. Then I ask, then I ask the Lord, what name is you? What name is you? Yeah, the 
is here. God is here. The Holy Spirit is here. I tell you, I tell you, his presence is here. His presence is here. Just go ahead and worship him. Just go ahead and bless him. Just go ahead and magnify him. Just go ahead and worship him. Just go ahead and hallow him. He is here. God is here. God is here. Yes, Father, we worship you. Sweet Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Sweet Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We ask that you take your place. We ask that you take your place. We ask that you take your place. Come and take your place, oh Lord. speak to me. I want you to tell the Lord to speak to you. I want you to tell the Lord your expectations this morning. I want you to tell the Lord what you want him to do for you at this moment. I want you to place a demand on the spirit of God that is in this place this morning. I want you to place a demand on the presence of the Lord that is in this place this morning. I want you to tell him to give you an encounter that you will live to remember the remaining days of your life. I hope somebody is talking to God. I want you to tell him to give you an encounter in this place that you will live to remember the remaining days of your long life. An encounter that will speak. An encounter that will speak in every area of your life tell him that you, you you want such an encounter thank you sweet spirit of the living god thank you holy spirit for your presence in this place thank you holy spirit for that which we are set to do in our midst thank you holy spirit for that which we are set to do at this moment 
Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that which you are set to do at this session. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. Have your way. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let the amen be louder. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please put those beautiful hands together for Jesus. And you may be comfortably seated in God's presence. You are most welcome. And I believe that this service will be a service you will speak about the remaining days of your long life in Jesus' name. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is here. And he is here to do you good. He is here to do you good in the name of Jesus. And this is a month you need to watch out for. Sincerely speaking, this seventh month is a month you really need to watch out for. It's going to be a series of encounters if you are really sensitive. This month is the Holy Ghost month. And whenever he comes, whenever you embrace him, he doesn't leave any expectant heart the same. It changes destinies. So the month of July is actually a month you really need to watch out for. And I pray that you will not miss your own time of visitation in the name of Jesus. Let me hear a louder amen. Fulfillment of destiny. Making a foolproof of your skills, your talents, your potentials, the profitability of all this, advancement in life, relevance, influence, achieving your desires, achieving your dreams are at the mercy of the operation of the dimensions of the Spirit of God in your life and my life. Having anything outstanding, fulfilling your dreams, profiting from that which God has deposited inside of you, reaching that height of greatness that you desire, they are all at the mercy of the operation of the Spirit of God inside of you. Last week we started this topic, Dimensions of the Spirit. It's our uh, month of gaining momentum. And like I defined last week, I said to gain momentum means to have a force that keeps you going. That keeps you going when you embark on a journey, a process, or a thing. So that is the force that you need to gain to sustain whatever the Lord has started in your life. And to take you beyond, not to leave you stagnant. Amen. So today we are looking at part two of dimensions of the Spirit. Dimensions of the Spirit, part 2. And I would like to read from Isaiah chapter 32, verse 15. Isaiah 32, verse 15. I'll read from the New Living Translation. Until at last, the Spirit is poured out on us from heaven. Then the wilderness will become a fertile field. And the fertile field will yield bountiful crops. Until at last. Until at last. 
the Spirit is poured out on us from heaven. Then, then, until then, until you have an encounter with the Spirit of God being poured out on you from heaven, then your wilderness will become a fertile field. And even though you have a fertile field, you may not have crops growing on it. You may not have anything to show that you have a fertile field. It says, then your fertile field will begin to yield bountiful crops. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, if you are here, and I know a lot of us, you know, <laughs> fall into this. Your present reality is not your desire. Or if you just feel that there is more to my life, you feel that, yes, I need to take my life to a higher level. I need to move on. I need to do something better. There is always something in you yearning for, for more. I tell you by the Spirit of God that you will live here changed in the name of Jesus. Oh, let me hear you believe in amen. amen. I tell you by the Spirit of God that you are living here, being launched into another realm in the name of Jesus. Amen. I tell you by the Spirit of God, you are living here with an encounter that you will live to talk about the remaining days of your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Encounters that changes destinies. Encounter that brings out, that awakens the greatness in, in men. Encounters that leave men birthing, birthing destinies, birthing generations. You are living here with such an encounter in the name of Jesus. If you are the one I'm talking about, let your amen be the loudest. Until the spirit is poured upon us from on high. Until you begin to manifest and begin to walk in this realm, in these dimensions of the spirit I'm talking about, you can't have a productive life. You can't have an impactful life. Your life cannot move forward. And it looks as if all your efforts are not yielding any results until the spirit is poured upon us from an eye. Until there's an activation of the dimensions of the spirit in your life. It looks as if you are just walking. It looks as if you are just struggling. It looks as if you are not even doing anything. Because you don't have anything to show for it. But I tell you, your story is changing this morning. If you are the one I'm talking about, let your amen be the loudest. The Bible says, by strength, no man shall prevail. By strength. No man shall prevail. By skill, no man shall prevail. By smartness, no man shall prevail. By sense, no man shall prevail. I'm not trying to downplay your strength or your skill or anything. But the Bible says you can't prevail by every of this. Until they are powered by the Spirit of God. And I believe that the power of God is here to help you. Achieve every of those dreams in the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, You shall be a living witness, a living testimony, a proof, an evidence. You shall be a city that is set upon a hill that cannot be hidden after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is the helper of destinies. The Holy Spirit is the lifter of men. The Holy Spirit is the beautifier of lives. The Holy Spirit is the shaper of lives. The Holy Spirit is the refiner of lives. And I tell you that the Holy Spirit is here. I know what I'm saying, that the Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is here. And he is here to do you good. He is here to do you good. He is here to change the story of your life to good. And if it has been good, he is here to make it better. And if it has been better, he is here to make it best. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
The Holy Spirit is the helper of destinies. Without him, you can amount to nothing. You can't amount to anything. Even Jesus, God the Son, could not have made a full proof of his assignment here on earth without the dimensions of the Holy Spirit at work in him. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all them that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And I read to us last week, Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 2, where he was talking about the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. All these are the dimensions of the spirit of God that were at work in the life of Jesus. And men began to exclaim that what wisdom is this? Where did this man get this kind of wisdom from? Why? Because of the, of the activation of the, of the dimensions of the spirit that were at work in his life. Praise the Lord. Even God the Father, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, let me read from the Amplified Classic Version. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, in the beginning, God prepared, formed, fashioned, and created the heavens and the earth. The earth, this verse 2 now, it says, The earth was without form and an empty waste, and darkness was upon the face of the very great deep. The Spirit of God was moving, overing, brooding over the face of the waters. Verse 3. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. In the beginning, the earth was without form. The earth was shapeless. It was nothing to write home about. There was nothing beautiful. There was nothing colorful about the earth. But this was something that happened. The Spirit of God was what? Moving. The Spirit of God was moving, was hovering, was brooding over the face of the waters before God spoke. There needed to be a brooding. For the word that God was going to speak to be effective. Hello? God, the Son, Jesus Christ, needed the Holy Spirit to fulfill his assignment here on earth. God, the Father, also embarked on a project. Amen. And the Spirit of God had to brood to turn the shapeless world to turn the void world into what God desired. And when the spirit of God was hovering, was moving, then God spoke and God saw. I pray in the name of Jesus that by the encounter of this morning, your life will begin to take shape. In the mighty name of Jesus your life will begin to advance in the mighty name of Jesus. Your life will begin to take color in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will take you from where you are to where you want to be and where you ought to be in the mighty name of Jesus. From today, your word will carry power in the mighty name of Jesus. That as you begin to speak it, you will begin to see it in the name of Jesus Christ. If that is you, let me hear your loudest amen. amen. The power of the most high is coming upon you for creativity, for innovations, for inventions in the mighty name of Jesus. Now let's look at Job chapter 32 verse 8. Job chapter 32 verse 8. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. It says, but there is a vital force, a spirit of intelligence in man, and the breath of the Almighty gives men understanding. I would like to read from the Message Version again. 
And you know that one will fall in place from verse 6 to 10 there. He says, this is what Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite, said. I want you to listen very well. He says, I'm a young man and you are all old and experienced. That's why I kept quiet and held back from joining the discussion. I kept thinking, experience will tell. The longer you live, the wiser you become. But I see I was wrong. It's God's spirit in a person. The breath of the almighty one that makes wise human insight possible. The experts have no corner on wisdom. Getting old doesn't guarantee good sense. So I've decided to speak up. Listen well. I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. Now what message version is trying to say is that there is a vital force, a spirit in man. It is not by age. It's not by experience. It is not by human knowledge. But there is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty gives them understanding. And when the inspiration of the Almighty gives them understanding, it makes them outstanding. Praise the Lord. He said, I said, experience will tell. Age should speak. God is here about to take you to that place of your desire in the name of Jesus. Those dreams, those dreams, those things that you imagine, they can come to pass. And they are coming to pass. They are coming to pass. You can't be limited. You can't be limited. You can't be limited. You are a child of the most high God. Your destiny cannot be limited. Your life cannot be limited. You are an expression of God the Father. The one who created the heavens and the earth. Your life cannot be limited. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are stepping up. You are manifesting greater glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. I say you are stepping higher. You are stepping into greatness in the mighty name of Jesus. Things that your eyes have not seen before. What your ears have not heard before. That thing that has not even entered into the hearts of men before. That will be the order of happenings in your life from today in the mighty name of Jesus. If you receive it, let your amen be the loudest. The activation and the operation of the dimensions of the spirit in a man's life makes all the difference in the world, my dear brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter where you find yourself. Are you an accountant? A fashion designer? An engineer? A doctor? You are in the entertainment industry? You are a banker? You play the music? Whatever. The spirit of God in a man's life makes all the difference in the world any day, any time, everywhere. It will single you out. You are too loaded to fail. You are too loaded to be a victim of circumstance. God the Father has invested so much in you and I. And it must show forth in your life and my life. It doesn't matter where you have been before now. Say bye-bye to your former level. Because God is taking you to a greater level. In the name of Jesus. Let's quickly look at the story of this guy in Exodus chapter 31. His name is Bezalel. Bezalel, in Exodus chapter 31, beginning from verses 1 to 5, was distinguished out of all the gifted artisans of his days because he had the dimensions of the Spirit of God at work in his life. 
he would have had sayings like, and, and the boy is good. The lady is good. But I don't know what is wrong with him. I don't know why his giftings are not showing forth. There's something missing. He would have had, and, and, and I studied hard. I did my best. I put in all my efforts, but nothing to show for it. And that person is gifted. That person is skillful. And nothing to show for it. There's something missing. There's something missing. And that thing will be fixed this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you look at the story of King Saul and David. If you look at the story of King Saul and David. King Saul just had the spirit of God upon his life. In 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 10. The Bible says that and the spirit of the Lord came upon him. And that was it. Please don't assume that because you have the spirit of God. And you, know, you, have, you are born again. That you have the spirit of God and that is it. There has to be the activation of other dimensions of the Spirit of God. It's just like you have, you know, a, a, a power source in this place. And you feel that because the, the power is already in this place, it will power the light, it will power the fire. No, you have to what? Connect it and activate it. But if you look at the life of David, and if you look at Saul, his kingship did not continue. The same for Samuel chapter 10 from, from verse 15. Samuel had to tell, tell him, he said, you have acted said foolishly, therefore your kingdom will not continue. But concerning David, the spirit of God came upon him just the same way it came upon Saul. But the Bible says that David behaved himself wisely in the king's palace. And the king was afraid of him because he behaved himself wisely. Praise the Lord. So it's not just enough to say I'm born again. There must be that activation. You must operate in those dimensions of the spirit of God. And David's kingship was sustained even for generations to come. Is somebody here with me? If you are with me, shout hallelujah. Look at Joseph. Look at Joseph. Joseph the destiny would have been grounded in Potiphar's house if not that the dimension of the spirit of the fear of the Lord was upon his life. How do you think he was able to say no to his august madam? It looked like a juicy, juicy, um, what do I call it? Juicy offer. Sleep with your august madam and I mean, you will have everything you, you want. His destiny would have been grounded even though he had the destiny of a ruler. If he did not have the spirit of the fear of the Lord at work in his life. It is the spirit of God of the fear of the Lord that is at work in your life that will help you take care of those little, little foxes spoiling your tender vine. A little integrity here. Being able to say no to all these enticing things of the world. It takes the spirit of the fear of the Lord to be at work in your life. You are more than this. But there has to be an empowerment of the Holy Ghost to help you go past where you are to where you ought to be. Praise the Lord. The spirit of wisdom, we saw that at work in his life too, that took him to the, to the palace. How about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Praise the Lord. They also had the spirit of the fear of the Lord. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, Daniel said, I will not defile myself with the king's meat. And he also had the spirit of wisdom. They had the spirit of excellence. That made them 10 times better than their contemporaries. Listen to me. You are in this world competing with the same set of people. They have what you have. They know what you know. They do the things that you do. But what is going to give you an edge over them is the activation of the dimensions of the Spirit of God in your life and my life. Amongst all the people, they were noble, they were nobles, they were handsome. Is it beauty? They have it. But what is going to give you an edge? And what is going to make you better? What is going to make you outstanding? What is going to make you ten times better than them? Is when you have the spirit at work in your life. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, how do I begin to activate this spirit? Because I want us to pray. You are going to pray. And you are going to activate those things. I don't know which one you want. We have the spirit of the fear of the Lord. We have the spirit of boldness. That was at work in the life of Peter. You know, Peter, Jesus Christ already prophesied and said, you are the rock. Upon you I will build my church. But after Jesus Christ left, where did he go? He went back to fishing. He ignored that prophecy. He was afraid. There was fear in him. He couldn't take that bold step. Until the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2. And when the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2, he received the spirit of boldness. And that which Jesus Christ said came to pass. 3,000 souls were won to the church same day just by the speaking of a coward Peter. But after the Holy Spirit came upon him, his life changed. How about Paul? Paul was the last on the scene. But he had the spirit of revelation. What is the spirit of revelation? Insight into divine secrets. Into divine mysteries that makes you gain masteries over life situations and circumstances. You need it. I need it. Do you know why? I've come to realize that in life, what every man or every woman is craving after is power to be able to control and influence their circumstances. You want to change things, but it's beyond your power. You want to move higher, but it's beyond your power. You want to do some certain things, but it's beyond your power. What if you have that power? You'll be able to control the situations and circumstances in your life. You'll be able to have life the way you want it. Is that not it? You want a better life for your family. You want a better life for your children. You want to be married. You want to have children. You need something that is greater than you. Hallelujah. How do we begin to activate this spirit? Number one, you must be born again. Now, God does not force himself on anybody. He won't force himself on you. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He has given the earth to the children of men. It's just like landlord and, and tenant. Once a landlord gives the key of his house to a tenant, if that landlord wants to visit that house, he will have to take permission from the tenant. True or false? Hello? Even though that house belongs to him. And that is why salvation can be forced on anybody. It's a choice. God needs you to give him access into your life. That's number one. Number two. Let me just quickly rush through that now. Number two, through fellowship. Through fellowship. Number one, I said you must be born again. Allow God access into your life. Don't hide any area of your life from him. Allow him free access into your life. Praise God. You have that choice. Number two, through fellowship is beyond relationship. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. You can have a relationship with somebody and not have fellowship with that person. You grow in fellowship. Relationship is an event. But what fuels that relationship is fellowship. If I get to meet you now, we have met, we have a relationship. But what is going to fuel our relationship is fellowship when we begin to commune. So that is the only way, that is the only way you can begin to access that which the Holy Spirit carries. Through fellowship, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14 says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us forever. So you need to have that constant and consistent fellowship with the Holy Spirit because who you keep company with determines what accompanies you. The Holy Spirit has every of these things. As you begin to fellowship with him in the study of the word, in prayer regularly, you will see that every of these things will be manifested in your life. Number three, you must have a crave for it. You must have a crave. You must long for it. You must long for it. You don't, when, when you want something, when you desire it, there's a way you do. You don't just sit down and feel that, yes, this is all to life. There is more to life. There is more to you. There is more to you. There is more to me. Every time I tell myself that the death of Jesus Christ over my life must not be in vain. 
There is more to life. There is more to come into church. It's not just to fulfill all righteousness. There is something that has to be impacted upon your life. So you must crave for it in Luke chapter 11 verse 13. The Bible says that if you then, being evil as you are, know how to give good gifts, gifts that are to, gifts that are to their advantage. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. To your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask and continue to ask him? So you must crave for it. If you long for it, it is here. It's available. And the Holy Spirit will give it to you. Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help. Another version put is abundantly available help. Let's be on our feet. Let me tell you something. Everybody's, everybody's life, or everybody you see in this world, their life is being powered by one thing or another. Hello? Hello? And that's why Jesus Christ was saying that the children of this world, they are more shrewd in their generation than the children of the kingdom of light. Because we, we have those things to our own advantage, but we don't use them. Everybody, you see, making success. First Samuel chapter 12 verse 6 says that it is God that advances, his, that advances Moses and Aaron. God is the one that advances. God is the lifter of men. He's the helper of destinies. So I want you to pray. I don't know if you desire that longing of the Holy Spirit, that empowerment, the activation of the dimensions of the Spirit of God in your life that will take you to that level where you want to be. I don't know how desperate you are for a change of level. I don't know how desperate you, have, you are for things to begin to work in your life. I don't know how desperate you are for things, for, 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 for your life to change, even to the way you want it. Mm. Mm. I want you to begin to pray and ask that the Holy Spirit, the dimensions of the spirit of wisdom, of the fear of the Lord, of knowledge, of understanding, of the spirit of boldness, of the spirit of revelation, that Lord, let them be activated in my life. Begin to pray, begin to pray. If you can pray in the spirit, please pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit and begin to activate those dimensions of the spirit in your life. Begin to activate those dimensions of the spirit in your life. Begin to activate those dimensions of the spirit in your life. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge of the Lord, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of boldness, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of excellence. Excellence, begin to activate them in your life. Lebrodo shakatalian deregebosh, mendaya galagrada shandaya galigari baso pregede gede, membrada shandaya galagrada santa lagrada shendele gede gede gede, zuza lagrata shanda lagrado ze prodo shinga ya gada gada, malegrata shada raga basandalia de, membrege tekele gede prodo shanda ya gada 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 gada, zuza lagrata shekere gede gede gede, membrodo sakata lagra gada gada gada, is that the best you can do? Make sure you're talking to God. Make sure you're talking to God. Make sure you're talking to God, I tell you the Holy Spirit is in this place. The Holy Spirit is in this place. Your life must not remain the same again. Your life must not remain the same again. Those desires of yours must be powered to manifestation. Those desires of yours must be powered to reality. Those desires of yours must be powered to manifestation. In the name of Jesus, your life must be productive. Your life must be productive. Your life must manifest the glory of God. Your career must be taken to another level. Your business must be taken to another level. Your marriage must be taken to another level. Your status must change. Your status must change. You no longer limitations for you. No more limitations for you. No more limitations for you. Tell the Holy Spirit you want him to be power your life. Tell him you want him to power your life. Tell him you want him to power your life. You need a new level of empowerment. Activate the dimensions of the spirit in your life. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of knowledge. The spirit of 
counsel that will take you to where you ought to be, that will take you to the palace. Make sure you are talking to God. Is this the best you can do? Make sure you are crying your heart out to God. The Holy Spirit is in this place, changing lives, uh, touching lives. Uh, he is here to do to you according to your heart desire. He says, as I hear you say in my, in my mouth, in my ears, so will I do. Katarian de legedegedege Zalashta habaranda la garagada Masotalian de legedebo Jen de legedebo Thank you Holy Spirit 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 Thank you, Spirit of the living God. 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 Thank you for overshadowing your children. Thank you for overshadowing your children. Thank you for overshadowing your children. Thank you for resting upon them. Thank you for resting upon them. Thank you for changing destinies. Thank you for liberating destinies. Thank you for taking your children to that place where you want them to be. Thank you for changing the story of men in this place. Thank you for changing the stories of men in this place. Thank you, Lord, because the greatness in each and every one of us is coming alive. Oh, legrada shakaya da baraga satalian de legere Zuza la grata shadaya la grata baraga santalia de legere bo shadaria de zende ye geteri ada ya gada 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 malo jata ya da Thank you, sweet spirit of the living God. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just breathe your name upon me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yadewa is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just like in the beginning, breathe. Where I was before you found me, breathe. In the days of Koinonia, breathe. Yadewa is your name, breathe. Just breathe your name. Just, Just breathe, breathe your, your name, name upon, upon me. Breathe. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I see the power of creativity. New ideas. New ideas, new ideas, new ideas. I see liftings, I see promotions. Your days of stagnations are over. Your days of frustrations are over. Your days of being looked down at are over. Your days of being turned down are over. Your days of confusions are over. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. 